Hi, everybody. So we've got some a uh, trio of people here from a movie that's playing in the World Cinema section. Uh, it's called Your Sister's Sister, uh, directed by the filmmaker who last was on the scene with Hump Day, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Uh, her name's Lynn Shelton, so I'd like to bring her up, as well as two members of her cast, Mark Duplass and Emily Blunt. You don't have to run. See two microphones. Ah, there's a third. <laughs> the pillow fight is mandatory. So uh, the there's this terrific BlackBerry app, uh, and this is not a plug or anything, no. but it, but it has listings for all the films there in the festival. So instead of asking you just to like describe the plot, which you know you've probably done a million times now, I, I figured I would just read this little blurb. Uh, your sister's sister is about. Uh, here we go. While still mourning the recent death of his brother, a bereft and confused man finds love and direction in a most unexpected place. That's it. So, Emily, yes. what are you doing here? I, I'm actually. I, I'm in it. So can you tell us? Uh, let, let's hear a little bit more about the. the there's. There's at least. Two women I know about that are significant, significant part of this two. plot. So. Yeah. Well, we got Mark Duplass. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> it requires a bevy, as it were. <laughs> Rosemary DeWitt is the other sister um, in your sister's the title, and she's very, very bereaved that she couldn't have made it. She, yeah, she is I'm sorry sisterless. for everybody. She's sisterless for Emily. So Emily is representing both sisters. I just had to say that. <laughs> Now, uh, Mark, you were telling me before, I mean, for those of you who have seen Hump Day, you know that Mark uh, was one of the stars, and Lynn's style is very unique in that she works with actors very closely to sort of improvise around a pre-configured plot. Emily, from what I understand, you were sort of new to this dynamic and to this group of people, so can you tell me a little bit about just sort of coming into the fold and what that process was like for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was very ready to do something as collaborative as this was. I think I'd been a part of some films that had felt where you, don't, where you have less of a voice, and so this felt very unique and a very organic way to shoot. And, and Lynn just pitched me and said, do you want to come and have some fun for two weeks? And I said, yes. I would. No, and that's was, not how it happened. That Come is on. how it no. happened. No, Emily's agent called us and was like, we've got this little unknown actress <laughs> who would love to be a part of what you guys are doing. <laughs> and we're like, who is this? And who like, is she? We're like, okay, we'll give her a chance. Um, I had to audition. Yeah, she, <laughs> she had to audition. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we taught her a lot, you know? We taught her how to, how to do all these great how to things. Act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In general, yeah. And I'll tell you what, for, for a first timer, she did a great job. Yeah, That's she true. really did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought you looked familiar, but I couldn't yeah, quite tell. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. um, now, the, the production itself has actually gone through some really interesting stages. From what I understand, at one point, Rachel Weiss was connected. Um, and then the two of you kind of hunkered down and went through uh, various different stages of, of writing and, and working through it to get to where we are right now. So we can you all hunkered we down. I'm sorry. Yeah, Don't no, leave me out of it. Don't let them <laughs> fool you. Yes, it was, it was it's a Mark's very... It's Mark's suit. I it know, it's suit. <laughs> there were many conversations over suit. about eight months with, all, with me talking to each individual actor and then in combination with just three of us and then four of us and then we had a little weekend workshop. But um, I would go away and write a little bit, and it, backstory is really important for this kind of process. I feel like the, the characters and the relationships between the characters and all the history, um, even if it doesn't come up in the, to the surface in the film itself, and I don't think hardly any of it, if any of it, came up, but it creates this chemistry and this texture, um, so people really have a foundation you know, on which to um, hang the drama of the of the movie itself. So that's a really really fun part of the process. And um, and then uh, by the time we actually came close to shooting, we were able to replace one of the actors really easily because we had this Bible, you know, to share with her that explained everything, all the character Bible and the, you know we had a sort of a scriptment like a seventy page, you know, um, half outline and half. I mean, with, you have to understand, with Hump Day, it was a 10-page outline. There was literally a list of scenes and what would happen in each scene, and then everything was just completely and utterly improvised um, dialogue-wise. And in this film, um, 
we just decided to have a little bit of a safety net, and if we wanted to have some dialogue written and use it, we could. But it was never, you know, n required, yeah. and so it was there for them to choose to use if they wanted to or not. But vast, vast swaths of the film are completely improvised, and it's really couldn't have been created in any other way. Well, you said it was fun, but it sounds like it's, there's a little bit more to the equation than that. I mean, when you have 78 pages that aren't a screenplay, but something else you have to work with. It's exhausting. It's like stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's brain melting. Yeah. yeah. It, it's Especially it's like with the timeline we had, yeah. which was I very short. We had we two weeks, wasn't it? Even less, actually, because ten, ten days. Rosemary um, came on board, but she was still in production on United States of Terra, and so we had to fly her down to L.A. twice during our production. So we lost a couple of days, mm. and that made it even tighter, and so we were just really on task all the time. It was really... It feels like sometimes we describe it maybe like it's too easy or something like we just went away to an island and got five houses and just lived and shot and we were the happy little hobbits like doing our thing but like it's not it's not actually that kumbaya of an no, experience. It's, it's not like that kumbaya. Although we really were tiring. we were Afterwards singing Beauty and the Beast for quite a while. For a lot that, of the time. That, that did happen. Came in a horrible English accent as well. <laughs> yes, everybody I think, I was think, trying to mimic uh, Ms. Blunt and so yeah. lots of terrible, terrible accents. I think the words you used were <laughs> she got us back. I'm not deaf. Like you said you you make me sound like I'm deaf. Or, anyway. She made fun of us way better than we could make fun of her. But we would. We'd have these summits sort of at night after we shot, during dinner, or in the morning, and we would kind of take walks around and say, okay, what can we now adjust uh, based on what happened today? What can we do mm. to kind of streamline the story a little bit? And it's a living, breathing process while you're shooting, which is dynamic and exciting and so great for actors, because we just get to feel really organic, but it is tiring. Yeah. And it, it's another, the way you just described it, is another reason why kidnapping a cast and crew to a location is so great for making a movie like this because yeah. you're just together all the time and even Hand in your off time yeah. it's still so many time. ideas came like as we were having a glass of wine but before dinner or something like that we'd be walking around the kitchen being like what about this what about this it was just constant and i'd have like nightmares about yeah not knowing what to do in a scene and then wake up and be like oh my god somebody <laughs> started talking about adolescence and bathing suits and the arrival of pubic hair at some point, and 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 it and it made its way into the film about. in I such a fascinating way scene. that we were just like, it, that's the great thing about improv. You, you develop this rapport and you start hanging out, and then you know, telling personal stories. An hour after lunch. That was not my story. I'm gonna say right now, it it is presented to be my story on screen. It's a hilarious moment. I'm gonna go on record right now and saying that is not my personal Sounded story. Sounded a lot like you. get to actually see Emily Please. Blunt physically, literally blush on screen and in it, real and life. And there's one scene where Lynn had said to Rosemary, you know what, in this, she just whispered, she said, "Try say something that will really embarrass her in this scene, that would really embarrass Iris. And I was like, oh, and so I could hear something. I was like, oh, God, what's she going to say? And Rosemary came out with this absolute clangor. And for the first time ever on camera, I think, I cried with laughter. Yeah. I absolutely, <laughs> like, flushed bright red and... So that's the joy of the experience, that you get those moments and they're like really golden that you'd never be able to just perform. You know, it's, it, you captured the real embarrassment of everyone at that table. Yeah, and completely spontaneous moment. Yeah. But no I will other say, way to do on it. top of that, the cool thing about inviting someone like Emily into this process, which is like what I delicately call, she's very good at the movie star shit, which is like, she knows where the lights are, she knows how to turn to the camera, make those moments work, which Lynn and I really like, we're just kind of like fumbling through naturalistic dialogue. And so I was watching Emily like on the first day and I was like, Mark learned a few, a few tricks. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, look what she does. Like she nails the bumbling moment and then she like turns and it's like, boop, glint in the <laughs> eye to the light. And I was like, I'm gonna, I gotta do some of this shit. I'm gonna figure see, this out. Can like, you see right now I've got the best seat? You do have the yeah. best seat. And by the way, can you see I'm just like this? Like I've got all this room over here. I'm like, I'm gonna get an Emily's light. Right. So Emily. There obviously was less movie star shit on a set like this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. than ones you've done before. What, what, and so, I love it. so to speak, uh, going from what you've done before, I mean, what sort of expectations did you have, and, and was it surprising to you to be on a be on a set like this? Yeah, I think um, I think because we'd done so much work before, you know, we did speak constantly for eight months, and we had a couple of workshops, and that was very helpful, and so it felt very familial by the time we got to set. We're all on the same um, page. Where everyone was on the same page, and so, but yet the exhaustion of it was surprising to yeah. me. <laughs> I was like, why am I so tired, you know? 
But at the same time, I think that, you know, there were days where I felt really scared and I didn't know if what I was doing was working and I felt that trying to improv an expositional moment can be quite eggy for me sometimes. And so I'd, you'd be in these, you'd have these flashes of insecurity as to whether what you're writing in your head is going to be good enough. And because I'm not a writer, you know. And, you know, Mark you kind and of are, Lynn though. were very... I think you figured out that you were very good at it on, on set. I don't know. Maybe. You don't get to say that because it's like complimenting yourself. But uh, let me. Let I me was really. Good I won't phrase that actually. as a question. You're really good at it. You well, were very thing, good at the it. The thing about this method too is that um, it it really the final script really gets written in the edit room. Yeah. And so, what's lovely about that we have two cameras capturing everything. So never nothing ever has to be repeated precisely. None of the dialogue because we can always cut, we have something else to cut it to, always, because we have the two cameras. And what that means is that it's this emotionally safe place for the actors to really just take risk, you know, just, I mean, to just take the biggest risks they, they want true. to and feel safe doing. Yeah, and you can, you can be shitty, at, you know. Yeah, and sometimes you crash and burn, and then yeah. other times it's really golden, other times you feel like you're doing something that's like watching paint dry, but yet it didn't matter, because everyone was just, Getting through we can, it, we'll take, know? we'll sort out the bad bits, yeah. and we'll find, you know, just find the gems to use on the in the edit room. Right. So it's well, nice the interesting thing about that, I mean, and having you three on this couch, is that I think on some level it does show you a direction that a lot of movies are going right now, which is a, a more relaxed approach to how you can put a story together on screen with a certain amount of resources. Um, Mark, obviously. You're also a director with your brother Jay, and you guys have a new movie here called Jeff Who Lives at Home, and you guys also have your own sort of, in, you know, specialized, improvised approach where you write a screenplay and then throw it out, and everybody gets freaked out, and then you right. get them to figure it out. So that's, that's the exact conversation I have with my investors. It's a, you, you nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a hit, I swear. Yeah. Uh, so you know, and, and and Emily, you've worked on bigger projects, and yet you're willing and, and able to work on something that you know is completely different from that sort of dynamic. So. What do you guys make of that? I mean, why why is it possible to make movies like this right now? Maybe because ones that have been made on a smaller scale have actually turned out pretty well. And so maybe people are, are less scared. Investors are less scared to give it a shot at a larger level. I don't know. There's this I mean, thing that happens, too. Like, it, it, there's a technology element of it, really. Like, in the music business in, like, 1990, you could record a great-sounding record at home, and it changed everything. And in the early 2000s, we got these r new great digital cameras that was like, you can make a good looking movie for cheap now, which never happened. So while we were farting around doing that in our early 20s, we now kind of were like, oh, now we know what we're doing a little bit. And we can still use that same kind of uh, methodology of being little kids in kindergarten, throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. But like, we can now, we've made a couple of movies, so now we can turn to Emily and be like, will you please come do this with us? And she's like, yeah, that one you made was pretty good. Let's go try it, you know? Mm. So I, I think, think that... also, like, actors are really deprived of great material and great experiences, and so often there's, like, an entourage of producers on a film set, and that can be quite um, stifling, you know? So I think there are a lot of actors out there who are craving an experience more than anything, just truly a life-expanding experience. And that's, that was one of my main reasons, other than seeing these guys work on Hump Day, why I wanted to do it, you know? It's almost like people used to like take their breaks and go do theater in New York. Like this, this, this is that this same is that, thing. Yeah. I'm gonna go do my theater and, and have fun and you know, just be me as an actor and feel pure like I did when I was young. And you know, it's, it's a watch great Watch Conan break. the Barbarian late at night yeah, yeah. with <laughs> crew. We, we did it's watch Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> but that was just once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we find some element of that in the movie if we look closely. You're goddamn right. You, you wait, you wait till I take my shirt off. You, <laughs> <laughs> you just wait, buddy. Yeah. On that note, can we take some questions? <laughs> Anybody has them? I don't know. If, are we doing questions here? Well, uh, uh, I have more questions. Yes. Uh, Lynn, Hump Day was a breakout hit at the Sundance Film Festival a year ago and changed two years ago. <laughs> at that point, I'm, I'm sure you weren't expecting quite the reception that it received. You know, not only did it get a, a decent release and great reviews, it was also swept in as sort of the counterexample to the bromances that were going on at the time, uh, including Forgetting Sarah Marshall, starring Jason Segel, who's in your new movie. So, uh, you know, after, after that whole experience, that sort of wave of enthusiasm, which, uh, you know, must have been very new to you, 
uh, how, did, how did you sort of recover and get back on your feet and say, okay, I'm going to keep making movies and, and hope for the best oh, on the next one? Oh, she, she has a huge ego, I'm just yeah. going to say right now. Well, that's a given, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> My head was like uh, bonking into walls. <laughs> well, I mean, the big change for me that happened with Hump Day was that um, I had representation in in uh, LA after that, which I'd never had an agent before or a manager. I had both of those that come spring after hump day. And I was reading scripts. They were, you know, people were, producers were coming to me with projects. And so I was kind of like, well, I've never, I've always been off in the hinterlands in Seattle, which is where I live to this day, um, making movies kind of my own strange way. Um, but I guess I could give this Hollywood thing a shot, you know. But the deal I made with myself was that I would continue to make projects the way that I'd made Hump Day and the film I'd made previous to that. Um, because that, it's something that I can control. I can say, this, it's happening. You know, I'm not waiting for other people to give me the green light. I'm green lighting myself, basically. So while I was, pr I was developing, I'm still in development on a bunch of other projects that are taking years and years. Now it's been two years on some of them um, to take place. I was able to just go off and make this this movie, and it was it was great. So I like I like that formula. I like being able to still have some agency <laughs> in my own filmmaking career, and not sort of just waiting for other people to give me permission to make to make films. Some agency, but also an agent. So it's exactly. <laughs> when, when you when you talk to your agent, I mean, is that is that all it takes? You know, I mean, do, do the do the right kind of projects pour in, or did you get some weird? offers after Hump Day? Um, oh, it's few and far between the, the scripts that I actually want to direct. And there's actually lots of lovely scripts that I read too, but not ones, like I'd go see this in the theater, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to actually direct it. I mean, I really feel like most of the projects I make are going to be self-generated or, you know, something that comes. Um, this, this film, for instance, came from Mark. Mark had an idea that was the kernel of this film um, and that sort of, you know, uh, he called me and said... <laughs> What do you think about this, Shelton? Yeah. I was like, sure. So, yeah. We, so we were definitely in a similar spot where it was like we were gestating a bunch of kind of, for lack of a better word, studio-ish projects. And, and Jay and I had this list of movies that we would like to make. And I was like, I don't know if we're going to get around to making this one. And it seemed like it was better fit for your sensibility. So I just called Lynn and I was like, what do you think about this? And she was like, that sounds great. Let's switch it around to this and this. And then literally within a month, we had Emily and myself and our cast and our, you know, our shoot dates set. Off and and it just, it yeah. can happen really fast. So it's very enticing when you're in that sort of uh, slow development mode of, of LA. Right, and, and Emily, for, for you, I mean, is, is it a one for them, one for me kind of a thing? Or what sort of rhythm feels right for you as far as, as different things you do? Um, it's usually f for me, actually. I mean, it just depends on what the script is, and I, I, I'm, I'm very careful about what I choose to do, and I try not to strategize anything, because you never know what's gonna hit or what people are gonna like. There's no, no telling to it. Um, and so it, it really is just trying to keep doing work that I find challenging and, and new and exciting in some way, um, or a part I haven't played or a genre I haven't done. And, and it's and you know pe people ask like, what is your, per what, what role would you like to play? And I have no idea, because I, I can't, you can't really, categorize like a type of role because it's just you read a script and it takes you by surprise or it makes your heart skip a beat and you're like this is what I want to do and it doesn't matter the budget to me it doesn't matter the who's in it or you know um, I think it's more about what the material is and um, and whether I find that thrilling you know you, you had been dying to do a Mark Duplass starring <laughs> vehicle for a while though let's uh, come on just in this them. case, it really mattered who it was. <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's okay. Okay, so apparently Lynn has to run. <laughs> I'm told she's going to dance off stage or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. We're overdressed because our premiere is happening yeah. soon. And so I, I have to run. Like flip flops there. It's like, <laughs> look at us. <laughs> yeah, you guys are underdressed. That's what's really going on here. I just you guys need to smarten up. Yeah. Um, so we're, smarten I'm going to go do a tech check to go make check sure that the movie, make there's sure actually sound. Yeah. That's great. And I'll see you there. Okay. See you there. Bye, Lynn. Am I off as well? Round of applause for Lynn, everybody. Hey, Lynn. Bye, Lynn. Our fearless leader. So you guys can spread out and get Let's a little more. Let's spread out. Okay, good. Oh, um, find the, your light, The Mark. upswing is that we have a free microphone, which means now that you've all had time to think about questions, you Got can it. ask the first question. Hey, 
Hello. Hi, Emily, you mentioned before that this was a refreshing experience for you because you didn't have a ton of producers on a set. Of a ton of producers sort yeah. of stifling things. As a young producer, um, I have... Sorry. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Go away. No, no. Please. I have a different approach to how I am making my own films, but I was just curious as to what kind of you know, things you appreciate in producers working with them on set, what you find works for you um, to enhance the creative Well, it's process. not like they're always overbearing. You know, I think on most of the smaller films, they're really excited to be there and they're interested in doing films with a heart and it's some kind of human story. But I think the bigger the budget, the more panic, you know, in general. <laughs> so um, I think really just the thing I love in producers that I've worked with that I've really enjoyed... Um, it's been just an open-mindedness and just, just stay out of people's way, really. I mean, st I mean, I think take an interest in the creative side because that's ultimately what's going to speak to an audience. You know, it's not whether you're going to uh, be finished, whether you make the day, it's not any of that stuff. It's just as much as possible. Uh, producers that want to compromise for the better of the creative process is, is the best thing for me, you know. And it sounds no obvious. shouting either. Yeah, Don't shouting, like shouters. Shouting, terrible. Yeah. Also, there's this thing when there's multiple producers, uh, they often tend to try to find their niche, so they have to find something that they feel like they can help out with, and often they just start obsessing with like the hem of a jean skirt or something. And they're like, this is going to be my point, I'm going to prove to the studio that I'm useful because I'm doing this. Yeah. But it's, it, it's kind of the don't fix it if it ain't broken approach. You can shepherd a movie, you don't have to be loud to do that. You yeah. Know? Do you have more questions? Uh, I apologize. I apologize because I came a little bit late, so I don't know if you addressed this, but Emily, what was it about this project that made you want to um, do it? Um, it? It was really after I saw Hump Day and saw Ma Mark in that and saw Lynn's film that uh, that looked very appealing to me. And I think, um, I think because I had worked on some bigger films and where there's a sort of set script and there's sometimes no wiggle room. I think I was ready for a bit of wiggle room, probably, and well, a and bit you of had collaboration. Done this before you know? too. Yeah, and I, my my first film was all was all improvised, and and I realized how much that taught me as an actress. It's taught me so much about um, making brave choices and just diving in. And if it's wrong, it's wrong, it, but it doesn't matter. And just being in a safe environment to do that. And this very quickly felt like a safe environment, and so. I think I had missed that process that I went through on this little film called My Summer of Love, and I just really wanted to have that again. Um, and then I think, yeah, I think it was mainly that, just to be creative, be collaborative, be a story writer in many ways. You guys should see My Summer of Love if you haven't seen it. It was kind of like a smaller release. But it's cool, it's a cool example of, of what we do, which is not only improvising the comedic portions for jokes, um, but it's mostly improvising the drama as well so that you can find the most organic way of saying a line. And, and that was something you guys did really well in that movie. And so we were like, oh, yeah, like, there's a danger when you invite someone to an improv movie because you're worried they're just going to start, like, slinging joke bullets. Um, but, like, Emily kind of knew, it was like, okay, this is going to be improvising the drama, the whole story, and it's a, a rare kind of skill. All right, I think we have time for one more if there's anybody out there. Any burning questions? All right, so right quick, guys, what's next? Besides dinner, I'm I'm doing a I'm about to start a really strange tiny film with Colin Firth, and we play deranged social outcasts. So that's what I'm doing next. That sounds awesome. It is really cool. It's a very dark comedy. It's this commercials director called Dante Ariola is d is directing it, and Colin and I are <laughs> both playing Americans. Y'all are gonna go get so weird together. So we look together. forward to our fantastic accents. Awesome. Not a lot um, of improvisation, though, probably. There's probably going to be a bit of that. Um, the script's quite uh, structured, and it's, there's not a ton of dialogue, actually. It's quite um, muted in that way, but it's beautiful, absolute beautiful script. Awesome. I have a movie here at Toronto called Jeff Who Lives at Home that my brother and I wrote and directed together. She's clapping. You probably haven't seen it yet. It's not that good. Uh, no, anyway, um, that's uh, showing here on Wednesday night, and it, it comes out early next year, and Paramount's awesome. going to put it out. Oh, you're it so sweet. It is awesome. I showed it to Emily, a rough yeah. cut on my computer while we were making this <laughs> movie, while we were making uh, Your we Sister's Sister together. We were in a cabin, together. like, wrapped in 
like a shitty <laughs> little quick time, and I was like, and that's I when we were trying yeah, to fix all the problems. Yeah, and I still cried. I still cried. It's oh, beautiful. You're very sweet. You've got to see it. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll be doing promotional stuff on that, and then uh, my brother and I are going to go make another movie. So. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, guys. guys.